Blockchain city in Nevada. I can <laughs> say that, but it's sort of crazy because you can build something so big, but nobody's living there except like maybe a creepy little girl. I, I don't know. It's, it's crazy, right? But maybe that's what we are building. Man. Maybe that's what everyone's building. And I don't think the problem is that we lack good designers. We have a lot of great designers in the room. We have a great a lot of great designers in the ecosystem. And I think at some point. The problem is really fundamental, right? Because there are two things you need to do to onboard someone, right? And you need to create a key, there's no way around it, and you need to put some money on it, right? And I think that's that's where I, I'm saying it's not like lack of good designers, because you can <coughs> design as much as you want around that, and make it pretty and make it nice, but you still have to do those two things. And what happens, there are still some places in the front if you, if you want to come. But what happens if you want to onboard a second time? And I think that's where it gets tricky, right? Because you can design like a beautiful experience for your first mobile experience. But at some point, your user is going to have a second device, they're going to have a second app, they're going to want a second like uh, blockchain app. And what do you do then, right? You can, of course, just repeat the same process and you just create a new key, and you move some money on it. It's a little bit easier now because you already have money there, but now that's, that sort of sucks for the user, right? Because suddenly now, every time they create a new key, they're, they're like, they, they keep having all those apps with a tiny bit of amount of money, and that is sort of reality. I probably have a bunch of features and a bunch of tiny apps. That's sort of, it's bad for the user because suddenly he, he can forget a lot of small amounts of money. 
can do the opposite way of thing, which is just duplicate the key, right? It's good because now you don't have to move the money, you only need to do this type of key, but it's super, super unsafe. Because now you have to trust two devices with your key, and if any one of them is compromised, you lose everything. And it sort of creates, teaches a very bad behavior to the user, because of course, he can trust one device, but if you're teaching to him that that's how you learn, and there, there are ways in which you can do that which doesn't look like this, which is sometimes you're typing like a username and password, but really you're just giving away your your, your seed phrase to, to the application. Those are very bad situations, because you're teaching a bad behavior to the user. But the third way some people do it, which is you don't do any of that. You just keep the key on the server with the money on that server, and you can do it in a long custodial way. You can encrypt it and try to do it in a way that the server the owner of the server cannot access that money easily, but still we have the same problem uh, on what, what if that server goes out. But it is complicated, like you're back to square zero where if the server goes out, I hope you have someone, I hope you have the cipher, I hope you have everything exported. So how can we try to solve this with better transactions, right? And that's why I see, say a lot about designing versus engineering, engineering because good design requires good engineering in the back end. If you want to solve it with meta transactions, which is this new cool thing, what you do is every time you want to add a new device, you can have a new key, right? You just add a new key, a different key for a device. But notice that every device only has the key. Where are the funds stored? You keep the funds on a giant robot in the sky, right? That's a smart contract. And you keep the funds there, and because it's a giant robot, robot in the sky, you can give it funds, you can give it ads, either you can give it die, you can give it collectibles, you can give it an ENS name. And if you give it an ENS name, then the user doesn't need to remember his hex address. He only to need to, needs to remember like, his ENS name, and then he can find the address of his robot in the sky, right? Which is, of course, uh, a smart contract. How, and that's sort of how universal logins work, right? Universal logins is this idea where you onboard users by giving them a, a, like a money robot that keeps all their funds and the keys are stored in a different place. How does that look like? That sort of looks like this, right, in, in real. So this is like a real example of it working on an actual mainnet and I think you will like it because this is kickback, right, my code is here. Kickback is awesome, like everyone likes to, to do stuff in Kickback, but sort of, like it's only for crypto people right now, it's very hard for you if you're not a crypto people, uh, to use Kickback because you have to give them money and money comes back and it, it's sort of crazy. And what I want you to do, all I want you to do when you want to sign in is I want you to type a name. Uh, that name will recognize who you are and we will allow you to connect to the account if it already exists, but uh, we allow you to create uh, another account if it doesn't exist. And let's see how, how it looks, what happens if you don't have. So we are starting, imagine a user that doesn't have anything, right? He doesn't have, never heard of crypto. How fast can we onboard him from now to there? And I'm gonna do a countdown, right? And here's, a, here's what we are doing, right? First of all, you are clicking create, now you're gonna go, uh, you need to put money on it. You can put crypto, but you're gonna use fiat because it's more complicated, it's, it's more, more fun. And you're, let's say you're in the United Kingdom, and we, we sort of look for all the on-ramping providers available for you. We're choosing on-ramp because we're, we're choosing ramp. And then we say, look, I'm gonna put this amount of money, you can put in Ether, you can put in DAI or something like that. And the error right there, it means that we are using the Revolut card. Again, this is like a real card on mainnet, really working, we, are, we just like did a uh, screen recording. And all now that Justina, or our user, needs to do is she needs to confirm the card. She's gonna like type a, we sort of blur, of course, the, the private information because it's, it's a real card. <coughs> she types a PIN number and we will go back there and we are just past the minute mark. Now she's gonna type a confirmation code of the, her Revolut card. And uh, now she, the money is there, the money is coming. We are back now from on-ramp. Now, like, back from Revolut to on-ramp. Now back to, to on-ramp to, to kickback. Now what we are doing is that it recognizes that that money arrived at a particular address. 
We are now creating them, deploying a new Moody C contract for them, and that happens very fast, and boom, you have your smart contract there. And it was like one minute, 30 seconds, from zero to the user having a full account. Like right now, you're in the kickback flow, like you're adding more information, like you, you don't necessarily need that. But what I want to show you is also, let's think about all those things we didn't have to do. You didn't have to go in, a, in an exchange account. You didn't have to do the, some kind of KYC because your card is doing the KYC for you. You didn't have to uh, imagine, under, even understand you had to buy Ether. All you need to do was we, we, get, we, we made a flow in which you put your credit card and boom, you have an Ethereum account. And that Ethereum account is in fact a Moody Sig account. It is like, it is a Moody Sig wallet. So let's, let's keep going what happens after that, right? So you just added your, your information there and you can start using kickback. And you're gonna go there and you're gonna select an event and, uh, and choose to one. And let's, let's just pick a, a, like a cheaper one because it's, it's a real thing. And we, so in kickback, the way it works, you, you RSVP by putting some, some money on the event, saying I'm gonna send some money to prove that I'm gonna go to the event. You just click there and then you are an RCP. Notice that you just interacted with the smart contract. Right? It took one minute, 30 seconds to onboard you into Ethereum, less than 30 seconds now for you to interact with your first smart contract, and you are already RCP. And you can even see in fact that we have like three test accounts on the bottom. That means actually if you, if you go to that event, you probably get some money from us because we are not, we can like, it just isn't Paul, she's not going to that event. This event is tomorrow. Yeah, it, yeah. it's actually a real one. So when you say you're Justina, Justina is not coming. <laughs> exactly. So just tell you. Now we're going to set. What happens now if you want to onboard a second time, right? Evidence is now a mobile app, right? First we had a web experience, now we're going on a mobile app. All you need to do is type, look, I'm Justina, I already exist. So you won't have to go to the on-ramp flow again. What you're gonna have to do is just go to kickback and confirm that you were you. And the way we do that, we do with this little winding thing, which I think I find super funny. The idea of it being very simple, we don't want you to have a man in the middle attack. So this is just a way for you to confirm the account that you are that you are in, right? So in a way it's like typing a hex address, but instead of having a hex address, we just have to select from six emojis and then you can confirm that's you. And as soon as you go, you confirm your device, now you're connecting to it, and then you'll be able to uh, access it on your mobile account. So all you needed to do to use your, your, your new mobile account was tell who you are, confirm it on the problem, right? That's sort of like real time on mainnet with working with your money. And now you're already on evidence. Evidence is a timestamping tool. Timestamping is an interesting tool because it's been like since Bitcoin, people have been talking about timestamping. It's a useful thing, but I've never seen anyone actually do it because it's so complicated for you to be able to timestamp on Ethereum or, or any Bitcoin, any blockchain at all. Now all you need to do, now we are, we're gonna choose a photo there, just add some information for, for you to, to say, look, this is real, this is my photo, I took this in this time. And when you press uh, create, we are gonna upload that photo, uh, upload the hash to a photo to a smart contract, tag it, and came back, come back to you with a certificate saying, this is a real photo that was taken and you can prove that it was put on the, on the blocks X. And you just, boom, you just did it. Again, you just interacted with a second smart contract without even having to understand what a smart contract was in the first place. And now just, a third one, because it's cool, and that this is Jarvis wallet, and this is actually the wallet we were gonna provide. If you go to Universal Login, we are gonna provide you with a web wallet from, from Jarvis. The idea, again, all you need to do to onboard is tell me who you are, tell me your username, and then we are gonna confirm that username in the other, in the other side. Same thing, you come here, type for, for images, and you're already approved. And the cool thing about this, is that Jarvis is a more traditional wallet, and it, it's sort of where you, you, you will be able to manage all your stuff and inside of it. And we, we even added a guess, a guess picker. It's not necessary, I don't want you to understand what a guess is. You will be able to pay your guess with Ether or with DAI or with any currency that you want, 
but sometimes it's good to have that. And you can see right here that we have three accounts, right? You, we have like two on the laptops and one on the, on the iPhone. It means that your account is now Modisig secured by three different keys on two different websites, on two different, on three different websites, by two different devices, in different systems. So your account, like in five minutes of just playing around, is already super secure by multiple people. And we can just transfer funds, funds from one place to the other. I think we, we added like a hex address there. I could just had, have added a ENS login username, that would be cool. Um, and you can see like a real transaction on Etherscan that just happened from one place to the other in an account that didn't exist before uh, without the user ever understanding that it was a blockchain. And you can even see that the balance is sort of the same on both sides because you are in fact sharing your balance. If you put money in one account, you don't need to put money in all every single account. And that is sort of how security, how, how universal again works as experience from the user. How does it and how does it work from and, and how does it work on, on our side, right? So I'm pleased to announce that we've done a first security audit. There was no critical issues fixed and found. We solved a few others. We want to do a second security audit soon, and we want to also be able to ensure your your account. Uh, another thing we're working hard on is we want you to be able to quickly convert any Web3 app uh, into a universal login app. The idea is if you have a app that is working with MetaMask, and we know that. And from, from experience that we have with people, that's, that, is, that is a step where you lose up to 95% of your conversions, right? You're, you have a dev, and then you ask them, now can you please install MetaMask? You lose 99% of all users there. And we want, what we want to happen is that if you have that app, you can just add a couple lines of code. We will give, give you a custom medium provider. And the idea is that in the end, you don't actually need to choose between universal logins or MetaMask or anything else. What we're going to give you is just a button saying sign in with Ethereum. And what that button will do is it checks if you have a MetaMask account or not. And if you don't have a MetaMask account or if you don't want to share the MetaMask account with you, then we fall back to, to universal login, right? And, and there you can create, and there it's a flow that we, you've seen before. And I think the cool part of this, of this is you don't have to choose between multiple providers. The idea is that this is going to be a standard that will support almost everything you can put other, and you should be able to put any, any address there, there is a universal login compatible address, and you will be able to, and to detect if you have MetaMask, it will work. If you have universal login, it will work, right? So we are super happy to say that all of this is on mainnet right now. We haven't opened it <coughs> because we're still testing a bunch of, of small things. But you want to have an open beta uh, by the end of October. And if you want to join it, please go to our pilot program where we will slowly adopt like apps and help on board the app developers and everything so that you can test universal logins by yourself. So please sign up for the beta, learn more on universallogin.io, follow us on Twitter and everything else. Um, that's it. I think you have time for questions. to hear about um, where the payment gateways like uh, can you tell me more about sort of what options are currently working for the fiat on ramps so we, we try to get as many as many payment uh, uh, we try to get as many payment for uh, gateways as we can we are working in America I think it's Safello on ramp and uh, wire, is coming. wire is coming and, and so we, we try we're trying to always see like what, what works best in whatever country and just provide that to the user. Awesome. Um, how are you solving the problem of paying for gas um, like initially? Yeah, so every transaction, so every transaction you don't have, so we have a relayer, so basically if you have any sort of ether or die, like you can pay it with DAI and like the relayer will pay the ether. So let's say you only have that DAI on your wallet, right? So you can pay a transaction with DAI and the relayer will pay, will pay, will convert it to ether and pay it with itself. If you don't have anything on your wallet, right? The first time you enter, what we do is we provide you with an address 
that doesn't have a contract deployed yet, right? It's called a contractual deployment. It's a super cool trick in which you can send the money to the contract, and after there's money there, then we can deploy the contract and take the fee out of it, and then therefore the user is paying for that. And in fact, if you want to onboard your users and investors, you can pay for that deployment by yourself if you want, right? Onboarding process was interrupted during uh, after after payment. How you initiate the commission? Okay, you can answer that. Uh, it, uh, so it's going to be done uh, by the time we're out of that house. You can just reopen the website and then continue from where you stopped. Is the UI components a uh, web uh, web component standout or is it a React? It, it's a React it's only for now. Uh, we plan to we plan to make it uh, so it kind of works in the iframe. So now it's like just a React component on top of your application. We're gonna isolate it a little bit further. We didn't plan anything of what on web components, but if you propose that, to you, it's something we will consider. When you use the emojis from every dance back to the back, does that enhance the security? Why was that? You, you basically retype you basically retype your public key and code it in emojis, and this is just a safe way to transfer uh, pro, uh, public key. And uh, the alternative was a QR code scanning or retyping boring or retyping like uh, manually uh, key. Well, it's not the whole key; it's a hash of a hash, so it's like, a, like it also uh, gets around key lockers, which is kind of cool. Yeah, so that was the, the documentation. There is a whole chapter on like all the different ways to consider and why we picked that one. Yeah. I think it's one more, one more question, right? Yeah. The React component is nice, but there is not just MetaMask and Universal Login. There is Portis, Serian, any stuff, and there is Web Three Connect or or Wallet Connect. Try to do that. So will you integrate with Web Three Connect? So that last. That, that part of a particular thing, we, we want to have like exactly an ENS login in the system in which if you actually type a, a full a full address, like a, a full ENS, uh, ENS login connected, we, we want to allow you to connect for children or portions or whatever. Exactly like we discussed in ENS login. Okay. Uh, quick question. Uh, who pays the ENS uh, fee? The users? It, it, uh, like, depends on the app, right? If the app wants to give away like uh, if the app wants to give away ENS and pay for it, for it, it can. Otherwise, the app can charge for from the users. I'm giving it away. Yeah. The last question then. Well, okay, I think, let's, I think so, let's make the last one. It's okay, I asked another question. Someone else can do it. If we only have one. Um, how does universal logins work with existing web free wallets like you have like Coinbase wallets and other how would that work? Oh, in that sense, like that button will check if you have already a, a Web3 connection, right? If you click sign in with Ethereum, then it will open a, a Web3 connection. Like I, I, I use MetaMask as an example, but if you have Coinbase wallet, then it would connect you, would pro provide you uh, uh, one of those dialogues asking if you want to share your, your address. Would you still get like MetaTransactions with Coinbase wallet? Uh, if they allow you to, uh, I don't think so. Yeah, no. It, it, uh, from that point on, then it's just a normal web tree thing. I feel that that's my time. I will be outside if you want to talk. So again, thank you for for coming to talk.